Hello people, welcome back to my channel. Uh, so today in this video, uh, we will be seeing the second part of tokenization in NLP. So in the previous part, what we saw was by using uh, NLTK uh, toolkit or the library. And from that, we used different kinds of uh, techniques like bigrams, trigrams, n-grams. Uh, but in today's video, uh, this is a, a continuity of the last part. Or uh, this is a moreover uh, alternative approach, especially when you want to deal with LSTMs and neural networks. Uh, in those places where there is a long term dependencies for the input sequences, uh, where you want to do text classification or text generation in such applications, you need to know how it is actually done. So there NLP plays a vital role in such kind of uh, things. So. Uh, let's get started. So uh, today we'll having a TensorFlow counterpart of the word tokenization. So this will not be that big presentation, just uh, two slides I have kept uh, just to get the idea of what this thing is. Okay. So uh, tokenization by using the TensorFlow Keras. Now when dealing with blobs, so blobs are nothing but images. Uh, binary large objects we usually have pixel values in that uh, which are in numbers so grayscale encoded things like that but when we deal with the text so that is in usually a raw format it has to be encoded so that it can be easily processed so we don't have a, a generic framework to do that but instead uh, what we have is we have in uh, Keras a uh, built-in functionality by which we can do this activity because encoding will uh, essentially be on a uh, very higher side of processing whenever you deal with large chunks of data. Usually it's not like you get uh, data of some KBs or some bytes but it's usually of MBs or GBs. So whenever we do some uh, real-time application like uh, classification using uh, LSTM, uh, then we'll get to know how the complexity of data increases when you have to deal with. Okay, so uh, now when we label or when we start to label uh, for each of the word in that, I mean, that's for classification. So we begin to look at the similarity between them. So how similar they are, we actually uh, try to look in that. So assume like you have a uh, file size of 6 MB or 5 MB. So then you have to uh, extract and tokenize each of the words, then process, then it becomes very difficult. Okay. So there, the technique of bigrams and trigrams and n-grams uh, largely depends upon the size of the file that you provide. Okay. So in TensorFlow, uh, Keras, you have a very easy method that you can write. So that we'll see in the very next slide what it actually is. So tokenization using the TensorFlow Keras, uh, that is from the succession of the uh, previous one. So using tokenizer, we can label each of the words and provide a dictionary of the words being used in the sentences. So that will be our uh, major motive. Like for each of the words, uh, what are the indexes? That is the word indexes that we'll keep in mind. Okay. So the uh, important method that you want to keep in mind is that the fit on text is used to encode the sentences. So that's what it's all about. So where in NLTK you use the uh, word tokenize uh, with TensorFlow Keras, you have to use the fit on text. So that is the main takeaway of this. Now let's quickly jump on to the implementation part. So for this, I have completely uh, done this on uh, Google Collab. So I'll have to just uh, zoom this out and I'll just move here. Okay. So uh, this is my uh, tokenization using the Keras TensorFlow. So uh, just look into the important imports, import statements that I'm using here. So uh, first, uh, what I'll be using is uh, TensorFlow as TF. Then from TensorFlow, I'm importing the Keras. 
and from tensorflow keras a preprocessing.txt that is text we import something called as text to word sequence so you can read the documentation later so this is one important uh, library or method that we want to use and then uh, comes the important thing that is the tokenizer class okay so uh, the basic uh, strategy would be uh, to create an object from this tokenizer class and then invoke the method uh, that is fit on text which we saw in the presentation uh, for the further uh, processing so that's how we generate the tokens uh, using this approach so uh, before that we'll have a, a quick summary or a glance of the different parameters that you need to uh, keep in mind so i have a quote uh, i can is 100 times more important than iq it's very rightly said so especially when you learn nlp and this stuff you usually think it's very difficult it's not that difficult just the simple things that you keep in mind and just follow along with me okay so uh, this particular code which i have that is essentially is a string uh, it consists everything in uh, like there are digits like 100 is digit then there are some white spaces in between uh, this uh, different strings i mean the tokens then uh, there is capitalizations i is capital okay that we can consider the uh, beginning of uh, each uh, sentence should start with capital letters but c a n can so can usually it's just to make things bold but when you actually write it that doesn't make sense okay so we don't want that hassle so we'll convert everything to lowercase but we need not do that explicitly internally it is handled by uh, this particular text to word sequence so it will do that activity for you so uh, inside text to word sequence we pass this quote and we store into a result that is as simple as that if i just run this uh, you can see everything from above uh, they have been converted to tokens and everything is in lower case uh, also uh, this digit is considered as a string also okay else you have to do the type casting but uh, you are not doing that thing uh, our major goal is to tokenize this thing so just keep in mind about that it's not about the different data types that we are dealing with but uh, tokenization so for uh, tokenization we have a tokenizer api so uh, from the tokenizer class that is this one uh, we are creating an object t and we are invoking that method that is fit on text on this particular code so once you do that uh, we have some learnings to see here so uh, i'll just uh, move this here okay so uh, i have four print statements here so as you can see the first is t dot words count so how many word counts are there in this particular uh, string that is from quote so uh, here what internally it gives out is an ordered dict so if you look at this so ordered dict comes uh, under collections so collections is one uh, standard library which is present in python so at the back end uh, all the text processing and stuffs are written in this particular data structure so uh, what this uh, order dict uh, especially does is it is a subclass actually that remembers the order entries uh, how and when they were added so you can just uh, look into this thing so if you look at the first just look at this processed one that is this this output uh, i so you can count how many times i has occurred or the frequency of the word so i here you have one two three four and five so that is nothing but this five uh, then what comes after that is c okay so it's not like in an alphabetical order a b c it's not like that in that way but since it is under the order dict the way how it is uh, entered or 
how the quote is written in that way it has to count the frequencies okay so that's where order dip comes into picture the implementation you need not worry about that it's all internal inside uh, this particular uh, function that is fit on text or uh, the keras library is written in such a way that uh, it gives the output in this particular data structure then uh, c uh, if you look at c it's present only in can so that's why it's one if you look at a so a is present here one then two and three so that's why it's three if you look at n so n is present here one time then two so that's why it's two and likewise uh, till all the uh, individual tokens so if you look at uh, 100 that is 100 uh, 1 it has taken that 1 so count of 1 or frequency of 1 is just 1 0 or 0 it's 2 okay so everything it will consider as tokens individual digits and alphabets okay uh, then what comes next is t dot document count so what this particular thing is so uh, actually it's written inside an api uh, which is present inside uh, this tokenizer class so uh, that you can do from your own thing uh, from your own end so i'll just uh, reveal like how it is actually computed at the back end so document count will give the count of uh, each and individual uh, spaces or digits including white spaces which are present inside that particular string so what our original string was is to look at here okay now how did we get this 41 number or what is the calculation behind this if you uh, just sum up this frequency values that is 5 plus 1 6 plus 3 9 11 13 14 16 21 24 26 uh, this sums up to 30 then 31 32 33 okay so all this strings took up 33 then there is a space in between this two 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 and 41 so that's how we get this 41 value so that is nothing but your document count and then we have word indexes so uh, we are interested in uh, getting the word indexes okay so it will return a dictionary so that will not have any duplicate values as in so that gives the count uh, that is the key value pairs of each of the tokens which are present inside this so how this is actually ranked uh, i'll show you so here uh, the highest frequency of one particular token so here it is i in this case so it is five so five will be given an index one okay so consider the rank of uh, token i uh, then you have uh, for t so for t also it's 5 but t will be given a second index because uh, the order in which how they come that is different so here c uh, i comes first and followed then after that t comes so t is given a second index so after that you don't have any frequency with 4 instead you have 3 so a is given as 3 and uh, then similarly you have m so m is given as 4 so actually the index uh, will be unique to each of the tokens okay uh, but the way how it is processed it's in same way so you can check this out for all the different tokens which are present inside that then uh, what is there is called as a default dict so that is again from the collections uh, class so that is also a subclass of this so it calls a factory function to supply missing values so if there are any missing values further down the processing in your uh, lstm implementation so there you actually make use of that uh, so 
it's with the word dot word underscore docs so that is nothing but uh, it will give out the class of the values uh, that is from the key value pairs the value of the classes so that is an integer class and the same thing which you can see highlighted that is nothing but uh, the output from the ordered dict okay so those are the uh, data structures that are actually present behind this tokenizer class okay so we need to understand uh, this data structure so this is the important thing uh, whenever you do any text classification or summarization or anything in uh, natural language processing okay so uh, we'll just take uh, two simple examples so say i have a sentence and it's in a list and i have two items two strings he is jose and he is german and then what i do is uh, i make an object of the tokenizer class and here what i do is uh, i pass a parameter that is num words so num words are nothing but uh, it indicates how many maximum words it has to take into consideration so here we have given a limit of 100 so obviously our words are not 100 it's less than that so accordingly it will try to fit uh, on the text so tokenizer dot fit on text we pass on the sentence and we are interested in the word index so if i print this thing so what you observe is he so uh, when you see here in this he is present twice so if you count the frequencies those are twice but for index so that's what we said here that is we want or we are interested in the word index so he is given as one and then is so is has also a frequency of two but it is given second index because it appears after he then jose is three and german is four okay so word index you have to uh, see how this thing is actually uh, getting indexed so that is the main takeaway of this uh, there is one more example uh, for that so we have three strings here uh, yonis is a nurse Sam is doctor and Ranji is a teacher. So here we do the same thing. Uh, just I'll uh, print this out. So here also it's same thing. Uh, is uh, its frequency is three, so that's why it's given as index one. Uh, he is two. Then a Hoser German Jones. So what it will do is it will merge the previous thing. So uh, we are using the same word index so it will basically append on to that dictionary uh, rest all thing it will do the indexing accordingly so if you have uh, more list to do or if you have more sentences to do the word indexing you can do in the same way so the major goal or why we do, uh, did this uh, tokenization in tensorflow keras is that uh, whenever we do lstm uh, by using the NLP or whenever we do the text classification, this things comes into handy. Okay, so well that was all regarding in this video and if you enjoyed this video and if you got to know you learned something new, please feel uh, free to share, like, share and uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. Thank you very much for watching this video.